All right, so this video is going to be covering chapter 22, section 3, which deals with functional groups. And over here I have listed the functional groups we're going to be looking at, as well as the uh, structural equivalent, basically. Uh, all of these dashes to the left represent where each of these groups would attach in an organic molecule. So, for example, alcohol will attach what is known as a hydroxyl group, to the end with the formula ROH, where R, in all of these examples I'm going to do, represents the rest of the molecule. And alcohol has, alcohols have a few uses. Uh, you may know alcohol that uh, people drink, that's ethanol, and then glycerol is another alcohol used to keep uh, creams, shampoos, etc. Uh, moist and then ethanol as well as drinking is used for uh, basically enhancing how cleanly a engine burns for gasoline. Now alkyl halides uh, basically involve substituting a halogen for hydrogen in a molecule. So for example you may have heard of CFCs which caused a big uh, stir in the 20th century for depleting the ozone layer and that was mostly due to uh, molecules like uh, difluorodifluoromethane which is basically uh, carbon with two fluorines attached and two chlorines attached. Now as you may know chlorine and fluorine all the halogens really are uh, really reactive substances so when they get up into the upper atmosphere and connect with ozone O3, they'd free one of these oxygen molecules leading to, you know, chlorine, uh, chlorine oxide as well as uh, free oxygen. And then light could spontaneously decompose this again into chlorine. And so potentially one molecule of a CFC, like a uh, Freon 12, which is what this was formerly called in industry, could destroy thousands of molecules of ozone and uh, wreak havoc, allowing deadly UV rays into our atmosphere. So there was a big uh, movement to end the use of CFCs. However, they're not all bad. Uh, for example, Teflon is the alcohol halide C2F4, and because these fluorines are sort of wrapped up in the carbon, uh, they don't really stick to much since uh, the bonds are pretty unreactive. Moving on now to ethers. Now ethers are compounds with a free oxygen group in the middle. So they generally have the formula R-O-R prime, where R prime is another organic compound basically that can be the same as R but isn't necessarily. So these oxygen groups in ethers can connect to uh, organic compounds. Now because this is a pretty stable bond right here, uh, ethers are usually used as solvents because they're very unreactive. Moving on now to aldehydes and ketones. Oh, That should be ketones spelled K-E-T-O-N-E-S. I forgot an E when writing that. Anyhow, both aldehydes and ketones use what is known as a uh, carboxyl group or a carb carbonyl group, which is basically dash C like that. However, the difference is that aldehydes have this group on the end and ketones have them somewhere in the middle. So for example, for example, Aldehydes will have the formula R dash C like so, whereas ketones will have the formula R dash C dash R prime. So basically ketones are like ethers in that they can connect to organic compounds using their functional group. Whereas aldehydes, though they use the same group, have different properties because this functional group is on the end of the molecule. Now both aldehydes and ketones are responsible for a lot of odors and flavors in our daily lives. 
Moving on now to amines, which are usually formed uh, from the degradation of proteins. Basically, they're a sort of derivative of ammonia. And so they have the general formula R dash N dash R prime dash R prime prime. And if you remember, ammonia has the formula uh, NH3. And so you can see when this nitrogen loses its three hydrogens and replaces them with organic compounds, hydrocarbons, or what have you, uh, it can form this amine. And once again, the primes and double primes indicate that these may or may not be the same hydrocarbons or uh, carbon organic compounds with functional groups. Moving on now to carboxylic acids. These are compounds that contain carboxyl groups uh, somewhere in the molecule. And the general formula is R dash C. And this whole thing over here is what is known as a carboxyl group. And what you'll find is in solution, they tend to lose this hydrogen atom, making them a uh, negative ion. And this makes them, because they donate this uh, H plus ion to the solution, this makes them weak acids. They normally don't completely dissociate in solution. However, they will reach an acidic equilibrium. Acetic acid for example, which we've studied many times as our uh, usual example of a weak acid, is in fact a carboxylic acid. Now esters also use uh, carboxyl groups, just as carboxylic acids do. However, these are organic compounds that form uh, when the hydrogen in this carboxyl group up here is replaced with some organic compound. So, you know, you bind it like that. And so, basically what you have is a reaction in which a carboxylic acid up here uh, devolves in solution at some equilibrium uh, with the help of water to form this negative ester group plus a H plus ion. And this H plus ion, once again, is what contributes to the acidic nature of carboxylic acids, making them weak acids. However, this ester group up here, because it has this free electron, can then form another bond. So the general formula for an ester is, you know, R dash COO dash O, just as with a carboxylic acid group, except instead of having a hydrogen attached over there, you can attach another organic compound group.